Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, we're going to discuss part two now. This was um, a short section of the book. It was only about 15 pages and um, it was pretty much Ishmael saying, get ready. <laughs> it's it's going to be a lot and I want you to be prepared. So um, it's Ishmael packing the bag um, to get the narrator and the reader prepared for this journey that may change them and may change the way that they see the world and culture and everything. So um, Ishmael talks about um, how captivity is what he teaches and it's not because of the obvious reason that he's been captive being a gorilla in the zoo and um, at the circus at the um, but but how Mr. Stocklow, um, his new friend and caretaker, um, had lost his family to the Holocaust. And so captivity is what we're going to be learning about with Ishmael. Um, he talks about how Hitler held all of um, Germany captive and of course there was the captivity of the Jewish people and the death of the Jewish people because he was enacting this story of the Aryan race as the master race and even if you were a German person and you didn't believe that story you were you were made to either join or be killed or or leave you know um, so he talks about how um, even if you weren't personally captivated by the story, you didn't believe that the Aryan race was the master race, um, you were still being held captive all the same because the people around you made you captive. You were like an animal in a stampede along, along the middle of a stampede. You're just brushing past you or you die. Um, so that is was part of Mr. Stocklow's story that he taught Ishmael and then that's where Ishmael kind of took off and now that's what he's teaching these pupils that come to him. So this is Ishmael um, getting you ready for what this story is in our culture and saying our culture is the same way. Um, there's a, a mother culture that it's this mother story that um, every civilized person believes and why do we believe it and are we just following the path because that's what everyone is doing. Um, the explanation is how things came to be this way. That's that he says that a few times that that's that's what the story is. Um, and so we'll be We'll be diving into it, into the story, but this is kind of Ishmael packing your bags and getting you ready for it. So he says, um, once, once you learn this story, once you have been on this journey and see how we are captives to the story of mother culture, um, you're not going to be the same. And so this is kind of like a turn back now if you <laughs> don't want to enter and have your ideas um, flipped. <laughs> um, and so a few other things Ishmael wanted to start with is some vocabulary. So the rest of the book they'll be talking about takers and leavers and he wanted to use those words because they don't really have positive negative connotations but just two separate things. Um, the narrator was confused by this, so Ishmael says you could think of takers as civilized and primitive, uh, leavers as primitive, um, but that the civilized and primitive have positive negative connotations. Um, so then he says that there's three more things we have to talk about. We have to talk about um, a story, and the definition of that is a scenario interlaying men, the world, and gods. And to enact is, um, to enact the story is to live as to make the story a reality. And culture is a people enacting a story. So that's 
that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the story. We're talking about us as a civilization and how we are living our lives to fulfill this story. And um, Ishmael wants you to think of what is this story. It's a creation myth that we all believe. Um, and that's kind of where part two ends. And um, it's, it's an exciting journey and I'm excited to move on to part three and really get into the meat of it. Um, I wanted to jump back to <laughs> part one because I loved the food part. Um, where he was saying that it was just kind of like a beautiful music um, in the background. And so I, um, I've i been learning about edible plants that we can eat, and I want to teach my kids that in my unschooling. So I wanted to tell you guys all about um, wood sorrel. This was picked in my front yard. It's like a clover, basically, but it's more heart-shaped than um, raindrop-shaped. And it has little yellow flowers. You can't really tell because it got smushed because I taped it on. Um, I think it's like five or four petals. And then there's little seed pods too. But anyway, so wood sorrel, it doesn't taste like grass. It tastes like sunshine or lemons or some surprising pop of flavor. And so I love that we can just be in our front yard and pick it up and eat it and be like, ah, nature, you know. Um, we also grow, we also have mint, and so that too we can just pick and eat and um, connect to the nature and the sun and the grass and the earth, and um, I'm so excited to be on this journey and to have my unschooling children along on this journey, and thank you for joining me on this journey, and please comment if you have something to say because I love to hear other people's opinions too. So, um, just part one, it was a short one, part two, it was just a short one getting us ready to really get into the meat of it. So I hope you're excited. I'm excited and thank you.